Recent events out of our control have led to a cascade of industry-wide cancellations and seemingly no type of event is immune. Massive music festivals, uh, corporate events and conferences, a whole bunch of tours and more have seemingly evaporated overnight. In fact, I've already had a couple of gigs cancel. I've lost some equipment rentals and my next tour, which is my next big project on the horizon, has been postponed. And the crazy thing is that so far, I'm one of the ones who's gotten off pretty easy, all things considered. A lot of professionals and a lot of my close friends are experiencing hardships from a couple of factors that are piling on top of each other one after another to create this scenario. First of all, March is traditionally the end of what we all know as the slow season. January and February are generally considered dead months in the industry anyways, and unfortunately a lot of people deplete their savings because they know that those two months are always going to be slower and they anticipate a huge inrush of gigs and the income that comes with those gigs um, at the beginning of March, which is where we're sitting right now. On top of that, a huge swath of the workers in this industry are um, what's referred to as contract workers or 1099 workers. Uh, if you're not an American, this might not make sense, but uh, in the United States, there are generally two classifications of workers. You've got employees on one side and contractors on the other, and there are legal distinctions and tax implications that are different between those two classifications. A lot of the people in the event industry, I would say more so than most other industries, are classified as contract workers. Of course, there are different advantages and disadvantages of those two classifications, but probably the biggest disadvantage to uh, people who are classified as contractors is that they don't get certain protections and uh, other perks that are afforded to people who are classified as employees. Uh, for example, you don't really get like paid time off or sick time allocations because contractors are meant to be working on a project by project basis. Depending on where you live, events as a whole are being canceled and in some cases the government is even, even saying that uh, public gatherings uh, over a certain number of people aren't allowed anymore. Uh, at least until things get under control, which will hopefully be pretty soon. However, while those policies are in place, that means basically no events and especially no events where production would be hired in are taking place. Tours are postponing or in some cases flat out canceling uh, dates for their upcoming shows and I think there's there's very few tours that are actually continuing to go on uh, right now. And on top of that there was effectively an entire month during February where Chinese manufacturing was um, effectively put on pause like a big button was just pushed and nothing happened for about the entire month of February. And our industry is highly reliant on this big long supply chain the origin of which is in China. So with all of those things in mind, I wanted to make this video, uh, not just because it's topical right now, but because it's something I've wanted to talk about on my channel previously, and this is quite frankly the perfect excuse. So without further ado, here are eight things that you can do starting today if your gigs get canceled or you lose your job in the event industry. Number one, your new job effective immediately is to start finding new work. You need to put the same amount of hours and the same amount of effort as you were putting into the job you just had into finding a new way to get your income up. This could mean contacting old employers or reaching out to your friends and letting people know that you're actively looking for work. And don't be afraid to take on part-time work that isn't event production related. It's totally okay, I promise. The main thing here is to not just sit back and say, oh man, I was fired or all my gigs are gone and expect someone to just like knock on your door and have a little silver platter. Here's, here's your new gig. Don't expect that at all. You need to be out there actively working for yourself if no one else is hiring you right now. All right, here we go with number two. If you were classified as an employee, make sure to take advantage of all of your perks, uh, namely being you need to file for unemployment. And even if you weren't completely outright fired and maybe you just have like your hours severely cut, you uh, most times can file for unemployment. But again, check with your state local government to uh, see if there are any special programs in addition to unemployment 
that you can apply for. Third thing you should be doing, and this is the biggest item on the list and the one that I'm gonna try to hammer home the hardest, that is make yourself more valuable during this new found time off. Really think of it as a time to uh, learn new software, learn new skills, and come back to the workforce as a more valuable and more hireable person. So you'll have to forgive me, but there is a little bit of a, a sub list within this list. Uh, I'm gonna go through a couple of pieces of software that um, if you're wanting to advance your career in the event production industry, these are things that you should really um, maybe not learn all of them because that would be quite a tall task, but uh, find one that you find particularly, particularly interesting and really sit down with it and do a deep dive into what interests you most. So if you're not already learning lighting programming, that's what I primarily do on this channel. Um, there are a couple pieces of software that I would recommend, but the number one piece of lighting programming software that I would recommend um, is the one that is most commonly used in your area. So you might have to do a little research on this. Maybe you already know, okay, most of the places around here um, use MAs or CAMSYS or AVO lights. Whichever one is the most popular for events in your area, you should definitely be learning that one. But in no particular order, I would also recommend, of course, learning MA2. I've got plenty of videos here on my channel dedicated strictly to that. Uh, the new MA3 software, if you are a well-versed MA2 programmer and you want to start doing a, a little more of a, a dive into MA3, I think that'll help future-proof you a little bit. Camsys is always a great option and they have 64 universes for free uh, via Artnet. Comes in handy all the time. So if you can learn Camsys, uh, that's also a good one. And then lastly, you've got like your, your HOG4 PC, your uh, Onyx, uh, all of those PC versions of real console software. All the demos, and in some cases, they unlock uh, universes through Artnet as well. So uh, learn those. So following up those programs, you've got the lighting, design, plotting, drafting software. Um, these are the ones that can really make you a lot of money if you're good at it. And you can actually make a whole career out of uh, just these softwares, the, the primary one being Vectorworks. Now, I'm talking about this list of things that you should learn during your time off. <laughs> this, is, this is the one that I'm gonna be spending the most time on over the next three weeks, Vectorworks. Specifically, Vectorworks Spotlight. It is a dedicated 3D CAD program that is um, basically the global standard for uh, event production design. In addition to Vectorworks, you've also got uh, Capture as an option. These both have free demos that you can check out and all the links to the software that I'm mentioning are down below in the description if you wanna check them out. Moving on from there, uh, general coding knowledge is always good. Uh, if you particularly want some suggestions, I would suggest Lua and Python. Um, those tend to be the ones that come up the most um, in this world. Moving on from there, we have more specialized control software that actually typically we use other control software to control it. Uh, that's things like uh, Resolume Arena, which is a media server. Uh, we use it on a bunch of tours. Uh, uh, there's also Madrix, which is uh, more for LED pixel mapping. It's very useful for doing huge installations uh, of like pixel tape, pixel tubes. Uh, anything like that it works a lot like a media server, much like Resolume, but more geared towards uh, DMX and LED pixels, basically. And then to complete the trifecta, we've got Beyond, Pangolin Beyond, which is um, basically a laser media server. With those three pieces of software in particular, you can really expand your value as an MA programmer because a lot of these tours are wanting to condense their crew and consolidate um, what an operator does. So if you can operate the MA and then also operate lasers and the video server, then you become a really valuable person. Following that up uh, is a program that I know almost nothing about that is Notch. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about it because I don't wanna put my foot too far in my mouth, but uh, it's essentially a real-time rendering engine um, for video content, like effects on video content. So if you ever see those live events that have like augmented reality where 
people on camera are interacting with objects that are digitally created, uh, it's a high probability that was Notch. Another option for that would be Touch Designer, which is my number two thing that I wanna be learning during my uh, forced vacation here. So Touch Designer is essentially a massive uh, signal processor. So it's, it's a way of routing inputs and outputs, translating things and, and making signals react to other signals. Touch Designer seems like a software where someone saw all the struggles I was having with programming MA and integrating all these other things and was like, hmm, I'm gonna make the key that unlocks everything that Christian wants to do with the MA. That's pretty much what Touch Designer does. Um, it can run entire shows. In fact, I'm pretty sure it ran the entire Dead Mouse show, except for obviously like the lighting cues, that's all run from the desk, but everything else, I think it was through Touch Designer. Don't quote me on that. And the last genre of software that I'm going to recommend is 3D modeling or animation software. I'm thinking like uh, Blender and Cinema 4D. Again, that's kind of a different path, but still super useful. Not something I'm particularly interested in right now, but who knows, I get a new hobby every 18 months it seems. So I'll check back in in a year and a half. I'm sure I'll be really into it. Okay, getting back on track with our original list of eight things to do if your gigs get canceled or you get fired. Uh, this is number four, and that is revise your resume and rebuild or rework your website to make it a much more smooth, elegant, and professional experience for anybody who is looking to hire you. I bring this up because I, I know a lot of you out there and I am going to include myself in this group of people. Um, we're so busy focusing on the projects that we have right now that are all in various phases of completion and we get so mired down in the details of all those that we forget to focus on uh, either documenting the work or uh, updating our resume or our portfolios and then next thing you know it's been two years and you haven't updated your physical paper resume that you'd hand to somebody so now is that time to do the big refresh that you kept telling yourself that you've been wanting to do, but you just haven't done it yet for whatever reason. You don't have to have some sort of crazy online web presence or portfolio, just something that is simple and streamlined so that people who may have never talked to you before, and maybe this is the first time they're experiencing you, to have a streamlined way to get in touch with you. You don't want any potential gigs kind of like falling off the side because people got lost along the way of getting to you. Number five, make friends during these trying times. You might have a particular set of skills that could also be of benefit to others who are also struggling with these mass layoffs and cancellations. This might not help immediately, but if you have a set of skills that you can barter with, you can trade specialized knowledge with people. I know quite a few people who trade lessons between like Vectorworks and MA2, for example. If there was ever an industry to barter and trade knowledge in, it's this one. And if you don't have anybody in your immediate circle that you can trade knowledge with, there are a ton of people online who I'm sure would like to have some of the knowledge that you have in exchange for maybe some of the knowledge that they have. Remember that we are all in this together and that people will always remember how you treated them. All right, here we are at number six, and I'm sorry, but this is just the personal finance nerd in me saying to cut back on every unnecessary expense, trim it all cancel all of your subscriptions for random stuff and do an audit of the last like two or three months of your credit card or debit card. And I promise you, you're gonna find some stuff in there where you're gonna be like, oh my God, I didn't even know I was paying for that. And you'll probably save a little bit of money there. I'm not gonna harp on this too much, but remember this is all just a balance of trying to get your income up as much as possible and decrease your outgoing. So trim as much as you can and prioritize the essentials for living first and cut everything else. Number seven, if you are watching this video, chances are that you're relatively young and probably pretty new to the industry. Am I wrong? So you need to use that to your advantage and you totally can. I know right now it seems like the whole world is in this state of pandemonium, but once everything subsides and everything starts to return to normal, I promise you that all of these gigs that are either canceled or postponed or whatever you want to call it, they're all going to come rushing back and they're going to come rushing back straight at you. And if you follow these ideas, then you'll be even more prepared than you were right now for these gigs, which means you can make more money and do less work. It's like a no brainer. 
but when those gigs do come rushing back, I don't want you to forget this feeling of overwhelming stress you have from having these gigs just like ripped out from underneath you. Whether or not you believe that saying money can't buy happiness, having an emergency fund of two to three months worth of your living expenses affords you probably the greatest luxury of all, and that is the luxury of having a clear mind. Look, when everything hits the fan, panicked people tend to make pretty stupid decisions, and I just don't believe you're a stupid person. Which brings me to my eighth and final point, wash your hands. Oh wait, wait. <laughs> like the exact same, Thank you. Like... No, no, you 